my fellow Ambazonians, this is uh, Dr. Cho Ayaba. Um, in the past week, the European uh, EU Council, you know, approved uh, some conclusions on on Cameroon. Um, that was in a meeting on the twenty first of March, two thousand and twenty two. And the Ambazonian Governing Council has submitted a response to that conclusion. I would want to talk about a few issues that we raise in our submission and some general principles that are very important for both the international community and to the Ambazonian people. Um, first, let me thank the EU for the human rights issues that their conclusions highlighted. And we also appreciate their willingness to engage in one form or the other in facilitating some form of uh, discussions that might end the conflict. We took issue with um, what they talked about as um, a conducive political environment, an inclusive, conducive political environment. This is very important. Uh, we have also wished for a conducive political environment for Cameroon without Ambazonia. That is what we did in 19, in the late 50s when we took in refugees from uh, Cameroon because we then as we do now saw ourselves as upholding international treaty and customary law and practices whether they were issues of protecting individuals escaping political persecution or um, granting temporary residence to those affected by conflict. Ambazonia has always been a state that lived up to the expectations of international rules. We referred to the EU we made reference to Article 2, Paragraph 4 of the UN Charter that talks about territorial integrity and political independence of states. There are international law principles that are critical if the international community wants a conclusive end of this conflict. The end of a war does not mean the end of a conflict. Conflict exists even without war. And so you might end the war and you don't deal with the, uh, the conflicting issues. The war might still continue. You are not going to resolve the Ambazonian question by simply working for peace. You are going to work for justice. And justice for Ambazonia means the end of the colonization of our country. Justice for Ambazonia and the international community should mean upholding international law respect of the sovereignty and political independence of states, upholding international law principles that says you cannot dispossess a people of what they possess. That is an important international law principle that guides 
the protection of nations, the principle of uti possidetis. You cannot dispossess a people of their land because that is the basis of international conflict. We also referred the EU to the African Union Constitutive Act in its Article 4 that clearly states that countries shall not simply extend their borders at independence. That means you cannot, even if you do extend that border, transform a de facto situation of occupation into a de jure one. That means you cannot, by any means, whether force, coercion, persuasion, extend your border without an understanding of those within whose territory your border has now extended simply turn that situation into one that is legal irrespective of how long that occupation has taken place let me remind amazonians that in 1707 the kingdom of scotland and the United Kingdom signed an Act of Union Treaty, a binding Act of Union Treaty that led to the creation of Great Britain. More than 300 years after, even though they existed a Union Treaty, duly signed by the Kingdom of Scotland and the United Kingdom, Scotland preserve its own peculiarities. Scotland preserve its nation. And despite the opportunities that Scotland benefits from the United Kingdom of Great Britain, despite the right to self-determination, despite devolution of powers that has created for Scotland its own devolved assembly. The Scottish people have gotten two opportunities to vote to become an independent state. How long must a people exist before they are allowed to be free? How long must a people exist before they are allowed to be free? That is, this is a question for the international community. When they make all of these conclusions, these resolutions, they must answer the fundamental question. How long must a people exist before they are allowed to be free? We have been a people with or without Western colonial exploit that took over our lands, stitched them together for whatever exploitative and administrative reasons. Bazonia was occupied by the Brits, later handed over to the Germans, handed back to the Brits, mortgaged to La Republique. How long must a people exist before they are allowed to be free. The world must understand, and I say this on behalf of the Amazonian people, having the opportunity to speak openly, reflecting the aspirations of our people, that nothing the world does today that does not end with full independence and sovereignty over our land is going to end the conflict. For 60 years, we were butchered, discriminated, battered. International law principles flagrantly violated. Puppets 
who were first our leaders, elected by our people, were hijacked at gunpoint and put in place to serve a brutal enemy that dismantled institutions of democracy and self-governance, institutions that guaranteed freedom and civil liberties, that provided opportunities for our people, and replace them with totalitarian institutions that deprive, of our deprive our people of opportunities, murder those who spoke, imprison those who resisted, exile those who refused to accept. 60 years, it was business as usual for the world. As we suffered, lacked an identity, deliberately sent into exile for purposes of education, or economic opportunities, and security. Five years into a brutal war, thousands of our people murdered an enemy that walks into our land, now kidnaps our own people, sends the people into his own country, detain them incommunicado, try them in Kangaroo military tribunal in violation of the non-trial of civilians in military tribunal, sentence them to long-term imprisonment, burn down thousands of our villages, burn down homes, murder children, systematic brutality as a matter of policy. For even if we had a union treaty with La Republic, even if that treaty had transformed that coexistence into a normal situation of a state, systematic violation of human rights and denial of right as a people should get Ambazonians to invoke the premise of Articles 1 of the International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights, though non-binding, and its sister treaty, Economic, Social, and Cultural Rights. Made binding by international law principles of the right of every people to self-determination. Made binding by, you know, Articles 20, Paragraph 1 to 4 of the African uh, the Charter on Human and People's Rights. How long must a people exist under such banality of evil where they are denied even to speak a colonial language imposed on them? They are denied the right of an educational system that makes them an asset to themselves, their communities, their homeland, and the international system. How long? Let the world know and know from me today that Ambazonia is a free land. Nothing you do, no resolution you pass, no amount of tacit support, blind eye, will make us ever again be part of that banality of evil that has given us so much pain in the last 60 years. My fellow Ambazonians, my fellow people, I know on a daily basis, you get up and ask yourself, what is it for me today? How is it going to be tomorrow? It shall be well. It shall be well, Amazonians. Nothing else you can face that you have never, you've not faced from these people. They've murdered your patriots and exposed their body in plain sight to tell you that if you dare dream of a land of freedom, the bodies of your sons, the heroes of your land, their bodies will be exposed. They chop, chop the head off of your people. They've burned down all mothers in their homes. They've buried some alive. Some we don't even know where they are. They've gone into foreign countries, kidnapped even those who are taking refuge, brought them back. What else would they do to you that they have not done? What do you fear 
that has not been imposed. Are you going to push the international community away as though they have ever been part of your strive to be free? My fellow people, I am grateful to this generation. I, Dr. Cho Ayaba, I am happy to be alive during this moment to experience what is going on, to experience the act of bravery and defiance of our people, even in times of great uncertainty. I am glad to be part of this journey, no matter how brutal the future looks. We will not take one step backward on the bodies of brave men and women who've laid their lives for our country against an evil system that tried to impose its language on us, its system of curtailment and deprivation. We took it for so long. We took it for so long. Those who stood up before us were murdered on point blank range like Gil Betten Folem at the University of Boya. His pa Zakari and Khan, his toes were chopped off in Kondengi. Julius Ngundi begged just to be given water. He was allowed to, to die. Ntanen Daniel. Fai Lawrence had a stick put into his urinary tract and he bled to death. They tortured people to the extent some were asked to dance on sharp sun, singing beer before God, beer before God. I am proud to be part of this generation that rose up. Nobody, nobody Ambazonians. We will suffer on our way to the promised land. We will fight amongst ourselves. We will toil our mothers who even dig graves to bury our dead. But one thing will not change. We will never, ever be part of this murderous construct called Cameroon. Never. Write your will. That is the legacy you will leave behind. Be remembered as one who stood up even in times of chaos and uncertainty, not to blink in the face of butchers, rapers, kidnappers of your husbands and children, murderers of your patriots volunteers. Don't contemplate Ambazonia. It's the only thing we've got. Every other thing is vanity. Those in exile, you leave here temporarily. Your soul hovers looking for a place of respite. That place is called Ambazonia. We've got the good and the bad and the evil amongst us. Let them be ours. We all must rededicate, recommit. The world will not, as it did 60 years ago, redefine and prescribe solutions that violate international law, treaties, customary laws, practices, just to safeguard an international rule that protects occupying states. The world cannot rally for the protection of A and play politics about B. We, as a people, the Ambazonian people, declare ourselves as free men and women ready to give our life to ensure that the territorial integrity, the political independence of our homeland is not only preserved for us, for generation yet unborn. We are on a mission 
not only for Ambazonia, but for self-preservation of pride and dignity for the African people. And our struggle will ring bells across the continent that all people have a right to be free, that all people have a right to construct over their nations political institutions that are a reflection of their own reality, to protect their rights, protect their freedoms, their civil liberties, and to guarantee for generations yet unborn a space within which they can live in happiness. The world must understand for peace to reign, there must be justice. That's what we seek. We seek no inch of the land of Cameroon. Our struggle has never been against Cameroon. It has been for Ambazonia. And if Cameroon is the obstacle that prevents us from achieving it, we will do everything in our powers to overcome that obstacle for ourselves and our people. God bless Ambazonia.